Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name of victorious, of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious, he rules over all. Welcome to Truth for the World. Today we're going to look at a lesson called Preparing for the Hard Times. And unfortunately in our life we do have hard times, but perhaps this lesson can give us some good ideas and good uh, advice from Scripture and information from Scripture anyway so that we can be prepared when those hard times come. You know, in the United States, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, there was a public service announcement that asked the question, what does a day before an emergency look like? And of course the answer was, it looks like any other day. How do we know that today is not the day before an emergency? And that's a very good question. Uh, emergencies don't call you up a week in advance and say, hey, you know, can I look at your work calendar because I need to schedule an emergency and does Friday work for you? Emergencies just happen and we can need to be prepared for them. The hard times will come. We know that living in this world, you don't have to live in it very long to learn that there's adversity, there's hard times. It could be anything from personal struggle, natural disaster, loss of a loved one, whatever. So in this lesson, we want to look at different ways we might prepare ourselves for the hard times or for the hard times of others. The four main points that I want to talk about in the lesson today really come from the ready.gov website of the Federal Emergency Management Association under the Department of Homeland Security. Their four steps are, number one, be informed. Number two, make a plan. Number three, build a kit. And number four, get involved. So I want to take those ideas and see if we can maybe apply those from a biblical perspective into our lesson today. So let's start with number one, be informed. If we want to prepare for the hard times, we need to be informed. We need to know the different types of hard times that we may face. And we might even categorize those into a couple of different categories such as earthly troubles or uh, things here on earth such as pain, illness, loss of job, medical decisions or emergencies, and also spiritual troubles, temptations, or um, doubt, fears, betrayal, whatever they may be. So how can we be informed? Well, of course, we can study God's Word and see what it says on topics regarding hard times. You know, the Bible records lots of hard times in the scriptures. There's a uh, listing of just different things that have happened throughout history. There's a whole bunch of history in the Bible. And in human time frames, they're going to face a lot of the same people in, in old history that we would face today. Maybe it takes on a different shape or a different form, but it's still similar. They faced temptation. They faced loss of loved ones. They faced, you know, uh, fights and struggles. So we want to study what others have faced and then study it to understand how they did it and handled it properly or perhaps even learn from their mistakes and how they handled things improperly. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 lets us know that there is information for us even in the Old Testament scriptures. Sometimes people may point at the Church of Christ and falsely, whether they know it or not, they're falsely saying, you people in the Church of Christ don't believe in the Old Testament. Well, uh, if we didn't believe in the Old Testament, there's not much need for the New Testament. There's not much reason to study the New Testament if the Old Testament's false. But the fact is we do believe in the Old Testament and we think there's a lot to learn from it. It just so happens that's the law or the covenant that we're not under anymore. That's why it's called the New Testament. 
In uh, Scripture, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, we're told this. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. I've learned things from reading the Old Testament. Most recently, I've read probably um, the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament, and I think I've learned more about how to live my life better because I, I read that, that New Testament, or excuse me, Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes written by the wise man Solomon. And in our uh, Bible class that I attend at the congregation where I go, we've been reading some of the Old Testament books about the Israelites and learning about how they didn't trust God and how we needed to trust and obey God that He will see us through, He will provide for us. We can learn from their mistakes. We can learn what they did right and learn what they did wrong. And so there is information. And if you want to find out how people handled death, there is information in there too. King David lost his son. And there's a great example on how to handle death when he found out his young child had died. There's grief. Uh, once again, King David was very, very sorry after he had sinned with Bathsheba, and you can read in the book of Psalm about how he dealt and uh, with his grief. There are stories of, you, you can probably name almost any human struggle or any human uh, encounter that we face in our life, and there's probably an, a historical account in the Old Testament that deals with that. So we want to be informed, not to mention the fact that we can read the New Testament and most of the New Testament are letters written by people like Paul or John. And those letters tell us about life and how to live the Christian life. So we want to be informed. And the Bible, of course, is our main source of information where we can go to be informed. Now, what about making a plan? Our next point is make a plan. Prepare, plan and stay informed for emergencies. Once again, we know these hard times are going to come, whether they be physical or spiritual. So why not get prepared? What about what we are doing to prepare for emergencies? From a spiritual perspective, one thing we can do is check our spiritual armor. Are, are there any weaknesses? You know what a chink in an armor is? Usually when we refer to the metal armor on our bodies, if we say there's a chink in your armor, it's referring to a weakness or maybe a hole or a dent in your armor. And if I were attacking you and I saw you had a weak area or a weak spot in your armor, that's what I'd go for. Well, Satan is no different. If, we, if he spots a weakness in our spiritual armor, that's probably where he's going to be more likely to be successful in an attack. In Ephesians chapter 6, Let's notice some about our spiritual armor. Read with me in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. How are you in your spiritual armor? Are you prepared for an emergency? How's your faith when you start getting attacks from Satan that try to weaken your faith or question your faith? It's all right to question but if you do have questions, you need to seek out those answers, and the truth will stand if it really is true. It's not wrong to question. It's wrong not to find out the real answer to those questions. That's the, that's the bad thing, anyway, is not to look for the answers. If it's true, it will stand up. Is your faith secure? Do you know how to answer man when they ask why you believe what you believe? You know, that's biblical. 1 Peter 3.15, be ready to give an answer to any man who ask you the reason concerning the hope that's in you. Do you know the answers? What about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God? How handy are you with the sword? 
you know, if I wanted to learn sword play and I was a soldier, I'd better get out there and practice. I can't just pass it off and say, well, I'll figure out how best to use my sword when I go into battle. Well, <laughs> you may learn how best to use your sword, but the enemy may teach you how, how best to use your sword, and it'll be the last lesson you ever learn on this earth. If we're going to be handy with the sword, we better be uh, practicing with it. We better be reading the Word of God and studying the Word of God and be ready to pull up verses when appropriate that have to do with whatever's happening in our life. When an emergency comes, can you pull up verses and, and, and at least have an idea in your head? I remember there's something in this book about, about this topic or about this question or this emergency. Check your spiritual armor. We also want to practice with our weapon and our tools and 2 Timothy 2.15 reminds us to study the scripture too. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What about prayer? How are your skills at prayer? In James chapter 5, let's read verses 13 and 14. James 5.13 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And let's think about that for a minute. How's our prayer life? Could it be a little better? You know, and unfortunately what may happen a lot is in, in an emergency we don't think about God. We may not stop to pray to God. We may not stop to read His Word because we think we have to fix it or we have to solve it. And, and obviously I'm not saying if you're um, you know, bleeding to death that you need to stop and have a 50-minute Bible study. What I'm saying though is instead of running to God, we often may just ignore Him or forget Him. But in reality, most of the time in an emergency, that's exactly where we should be going is straight to God in prayer and saying, Father, we need Thy help. Father, we're having an emergency here. And uh, we might read some scriptures that, that help us to give us strength and courage. And, and when appropriate, use of the Bible scriptures and with prayer may actually be one of the best things we can go to in an emergency. How is our prayer life? Are we ready to pray? Do we remember what 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says? Pray without ceasing. Always be ready to pray. I've seen um, people that will pray regularly, even just almost once an hour or something. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That can be a great thing. Pray without ceasing. Always find time that when you've got something on your mind, pray to God. When you've got an opportunity to say thank you, you can pray to God and thank Him. And especially making a plan for an emergency. How is our prayer skills? Not just Bible study skills. How is our prayer skills? Do we spend some time talking to God about what we are thinking or what we need? What about singing skills? You might not think singing would be something you need to prepare for in case of an emergency, but you know, we teach through song. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. What does that say? Ephesians 5, 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So what are we doing when we sing? We're speaking to ourselves. Do you realize that? You're not only uh, teaching others, but you're speaking to yourself, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. The uh, similar passage over in Colossians says that when we sing, we um, teach and admonish. And that's when we get together as a congregation, we sing, and that's part of the reason we do so, is to teach and admonish other people. But did you ever stop that the singing can also be beneficial to you? You need to be learning from the words. And what about in an emergency? You know, there's some great songs that remind us of the priorities in life or give us encouragement. Those words, if they're good scriptural songs, can actually remind us of heavenly values and of heavenly or at least of um, heavenly things and biblical things so that we understand what we need to know. There's lots of songs that could actually help out in an emergency when we feel low, when we're tempted, 
when we're stressed or facing a difficult decision. Or maybe we just need a song about heaven to remind us that even though we're having a hard time now, there's a better time coming. Things to think about. Do we have Bible skills, prayer skills, and singing skills? Part of our preparation should include uh, looking to Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, let's read verses 1 through 4. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 4. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of a throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. We can look to Christ and remember what he had to go through and remind ourselves if he can do it, we can do it. God would not give us something to go through that we can't get through with His help. Remember the hard times point to God. They remind us we're, we need God. We can't, just, we can't just do this on our own. We can't do it the right way on our own. So what plans do you have in case of an emergency? Do you have a set of at least some things that you would pull upon in case of an emergency. I hope one of them would be prayer. Hebrews 4.16 tells us this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We have to continue and we have to keep on keeping on. But in reality, I actually just read a, um, a previous verse. That's not Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16 actually says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Do you hear that? In time of need. Grace to help in time of need. That's what prayer is is for. It's for the good times as well as for the bad times. In, um, and as we just read a moment ago, we're not going to read the verses again, but we read in Hebrews 12 that we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Almost instinctively, we need to be thinking in an emergency, it's time to talk to God. It's time to look to Jesus for strength and encouragement. And what about staying informed? You know, as a member of a congregation, if you're a Christian, do you have a phone list? Do you have an email list? A Facebook page where you can post uh, you know, announcements, prayer requests? It would be great if you don't have that in your congregation that maybe you should seriously think about suggesting that to some of the leaders of the congregation and say, you know what? When there's an emergency, we could help, but we can't help if we don't know. We need to stay informed. And I would like to also be able to reach out to others when, when there is an emergency. We're supposed to be there for each other as Christians. James 5.16 reminds us, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Prayer for each other and help for each other is important in the hard times. Even if you don't know what to do, and that, that's me a lot of the times, I don't know what to do, I pray for wisdom. James 1 verse 5 says the following about praying for wisdom. James 1 5, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. I use that and I remember that verse because a lot of times I've got option A, option B, option C, and I, I don't know what to do. I don't know which one's the right way to go. I'm not talking about biblical things, usually. I'm talking about, you know, life decisions. Should I take this job? Should I apply for this loan? Should I do, should I do this? Should I do that? I, I'm not sure. So I just pray for wisdom. Help me to be able to figure out 
what to do and to make the best choice that I can for myself, for my family. And, and, and of course, I also, when I um, am praying right, I also include, help me to make a choice that's pleasing to, to God, to pleasing to Thee, God. Help me, help, whatever I choose, whatever I do, help me to do it and choose something that would be pleasing to Thee. I don't want to do something that would make You upset or go against um, your laws and be sin. You can pray to God for help. Now we're going to skip forward here to our next point, our next main point, because our time is slipping away from us. We're going to make sure we look at the idea of building a kit. You know, the uh, ready.gov website recommends building a kit. And even from a spiritual standpoint, that's not a half bad idea. When an emergency comes, why do we have to stop and try to get things together and, and try to figure things out when we can do some of that work beforehand? To throw out some ideas, I'll pose the question, what would we build if we were building a spiritual emergency kit? What would we put in our spiritual emergency kit? Some of the things I, I have are verses on different topics to have them ready. Instead of someone suffering through the loss of a loved one or having temptation come at you and then you have to stop and go to a concordance and look up all the different verses that have something to do with that topic, why don't we prepare some of that beforehand? Why don't we just pull that out and have it at the ready, even if not for ourselves, for others? Others may need that. And you, you don't really want to say when somebody's suffering perhaps from the loss of a loved one, well, give me a week or two when I have time, and I'll look up some verses that might be helpful for you, and I'll get back to you later. No, they need help now. They need help then. It's an emergency. And why don't we prepare some of those things in advance? What about pre-writing a prayer? Uh, I don't usually write my prayers, but you know, it might not be a bad idea to pre-write some prayers for specific emergencies that you know one day will probably come. Uh, in, in a time of grief, it may be harder to pray when we don't know what to pray or we're struggling to find the right words. Maybe we need to pre-write some prayers so that we are ready to pray the things that we know we should be praying when those emergencies come. What about phone numbers of friends or elders or leaders of the church that you can call? How about having a at least a church directory or something that you can pull on to call a neighbor, call a friend, call a fellow church member and say, hey, I'm, I'm having an emergency. I need some help. Pre-written instructions in case of an emergency or death. It wouldn't hurt to be prepared. How about some tissues, some facial tissues for a good cry? Or maybe your favorite comfort food or drink or your favorite stuffed animal or a blanket or whatever. We know emergencies are going to come. Maybe we should be a little bit more prepared than we are so that we can get involved. That's our final point. Get involved. We don't want to be just part of the, of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. Sometimes emergencies come for us, but other times emergencies are for other people. As a matter of fact, we're probably going to hear about more emergencies that other people are having than the number of emergencies we face ourselves. I've traveled across this country and I've been on the West Coast, the East Coast, and, and almost, I don't know how many states, and I've been to other, uh, uh, several other countries, and I'm not sure I can ever recall going to a congregation where they got up and said, well, we don't have anybody on the prayer list today. Everybody's okay. There's nobody that's sick. There's nobody that's depressed. There's nobody that's suffering from the loss of a loved one. And there's nobody that's struggling with life decisions and life, uh, life turmoil. So we'll just skip prayer today. I would never heard that. As a matter of fact, everywhere I go, it seems like they have a list that's as long as your arm about things that need to be praying for. So the point is, there's probably going to be so many more emergencies that other people have more than what you'll have yourself. So why not get involved and be part of the solution? In Romans chapter 12 and verse 15, let's read that, Romans 12, 15. 
Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. That's biblical. That's right there in, in black and white. Rejoice when others rejoice and weep when they weep. What can we learn by experiencing the hard times of others? Sometimes you can learn what you're going to expect yourself. For example, if you haven't really had to deal with the loss of a close loved one, if you get involved with someone who's experiencing that, you may learn a little bit about what to expect yourself, and you may be more prepared for your own emergencies. You also learn how to be patient with others. You know, sometimes when people go through an emergency, they don't act rational. They don't act like they normally would. Look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Galatians 6 and verse 1 says this, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. We need to be patient with others and consider ourselves, because one day we may be tempted or facing that same kind of problem as well. We need to support others in the hard times. Galatians 6 verse 2, the very next verse says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the laws of Christ. Try to put yourself in the other person's place. Try to just help them. And I'm not an expert on how to help somebody who's suffering or going through grief. But I do know some things I can do. And uh, some things we all can do is perhaps be a little bit more prepared for the hard times. I, I know that I've got more preparations that I should be making. What about you? Ask yourself, do I have what it takes uh, prepared for when the hard times come? Am I prepared? Or is there more that you could do to be prepared for when emergencies happen? Not just for yourself, but for others. I hope that you'll think about this lesson as we conclude. And I hope that you'll maybe even throw out some ideas to your fellow members, your fellow Christians in your congregation, and the elders if you have them, or men of your congregation, and say, hey, maybe there's just more we can do, and here's some ideas. We know the hard times are coming, so why not be prepared? If you would like to learn more about God's Word with a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth for the World, P.O. Box 5048, Duluth, Georgia, 30096, the United States of America, or visit us online at truthfortheworld.org. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name of victorious, of Jesus' exalted.